In this video, I'm going to show you how to do data pre-processing using Titanic dataset. So let's get started. So you can get Titanic dataset from the Kaggle website. It's available as an open source there. So first of all, we need to understand what is data pre-processing. Data pre-processing is a crucial step in any machine learning project. It involves cleaning and formatting data so that it can be used for analysis. It includes several steps. The first step is handling missing values. So we will check for any missing values in the data set and figure out how to handle them. The second step is data cleaning. This step involves removing errors and inconsistencies from the data. The third step is feature engineering. We will create new features from the existing ones to provide more valuable data to machine learning model. The fourth step is feature scaling. In this step, we will standardize or normalize the range of independent variables or features of the data to bring them on a same scale. The fifth step is to convert categorical features to numerical features. So we will convert all the categorical features in the data to numerical as machine learning models work better with numerical data. So let's start the data preprocessing in Python. So I have already created a Jupyter Notebook in Visual Studio Code. We will perform the following steps. First of all, we will load the data, handle missing values. Then we perform data cleaning, feature engineering, feature scaling, and finally categorical to numerical feature conversion. So let's start with loading the data. So I already have titanic.csv file and I will load it using pandas. If I create a code cell, first of all, we need to import the pandas library and then we can load our data into pandas data frame. I will name it data frame is equal to and to read data in pandas, we can use pd.readcsv and inside parentheses, you can provide name of your file. So it's titanic.csv. And to have a quick look on your data, we can use data frame dot head. If I run it, we will get the first five entries of the Titanic data set here. So we have loaded the Titanic survival data set into a pandas data frame. A data frame is a two dimensional label data structure with columns of potentially different types. So let's see what is the meaning of each column in this data. So we have a passenger ID, a unique index of passenger survived, shows if the passenger survived or not, passenger class, it represents the passenger class, whether it was first class, second class, or the third class. Name is the name of the passenger, sex, male or female, age, sibling, spouse, how many brother and sisters the passenger have, parents, children, whether the parents or any children with the passenger, ticket number, fare, how much fare in dollars paid by the passenger, the name of the cabin number. Embark is the location from which the passenger get onto the Titanic ship. Now let's move to the second step, handling missing values. So first of all, we need to check for missing values. So I will create a new code cell. And to check the missing values in the data, we have a built-in command in pandas library. So it's data frame dot is null. And to see how many missing values in each column, we can say dot sum. If I execute, so we can see we got the number of missing values in each column. Passenger ID, survived, passenger class, name, sex, have no missing value, age have 177 missing values, sibling, spouse, parents, children, ticket, fare has no missing values, cabin have 687 missing values, and embarked have two missing values. We can also visualize the missing values using heat map. Let's see how to visualize missing values using heat map. For this one, we need to import Seaborn and Matplotlib library. So we can say sns.heatmap, and then we provide the argument. So we say data frame dot is null and we can say C bar, the color bar. I don't want to see the color bar. So we can set it to false and we can also specify which color map we want to see. I like the very this. This is good to see the missing values clearly. If you want to change the figure size, we can say PLT dot finger. And we can specify the figure size and finally PLT dot show. So you see the yellow color represent the missing values in each column. So in embarked, we have only two missing values. In cabin, we have a lot of missing values. And in age, we have relatively few missing values in comparison to cabin. Okay, now the question is how to handle these missing values. One common way is to fill the missing values with the mean average of the non-missing values in the column. This is known as mean imputation. However, this method may not be suitable for our age column because age cannot be fractional. Another way is to fill the missing values with the median the middle value of the non-missing values. This is known as median imputation. This method is more robust to outliers and skewed data. And we will use it for our H column. And for the cabin column, 
since there is a lot of missing values, it might be better to drop this column as it may not provide much useful information for the model. Even though if we fill the missing values, it will create a noise in our data. So let's see how to fill the missing age values with median. So first of all, we select the age column and then dot fill NA. And inside, we need to calculate the median value of the age column. So I will select age column and then I say dot median. And then there is one argument which is called in place. You can set it to true or false. True means you want to make these changes into your original data frame. Perfect. And then we can also drop the cabin column. So we can say data frame, data frame dot drop. And inside drop, you can specify the name of the column. So I want to drop cabin and I need to specify axis is equal to one. One means I want to drop the whole column. And now let's check the missing values again. So I will say data frame is null dot sum. And if we run it, so you can see all the missing values have been handled, but we left with only two missing values in embark. So we have two choices for embark. As these are only two missing values, we can drop the missing values or we can impute it. We can see the embark column is actually a categorical column. So we cannot use the median and mean, but we can calculate the mod of this column and fill the missing values with the mod of the column. We will say data frame embark dot fill and and then again inside first of all i need to find out the mod so i will say embark dot mod and you need to specify when you give a command mod it will calculate the highest mod and then the second highest the third highest so we want to use the highest one so we can say mod zero and then we say in place is equal to true and then we can check the missing values again see all the missing values has been handled so if there are missing values in categorical feature we go for mod and for numerical features it is always good practice to use median or weight now let's move to data cleaning in this tab we will check for any errors or inconsistencies in the data one common issue in in the data cleaning is the duplicate entries in the data so we can check for duplicate entries in our data set using duplicate command in pandas data frame so we can say df dot duplicated not sum and this will check for any duplicate values in the data and we got zero it means there is no duplicate value in our data okay now let's move to feature engineering feature engineering is the process of using domain knowledge to extract features from the raw data these features can be used to improve the performance of machine learning algorithms features are characteristics or properties shared by all independent units on which analysis or prediction is to be done. For example, I can create a new feature family size by combining the sibling spouse and parent children along with the passenger. So I will say data frame and we specify the family size equal to data frame. So first of all, I will select the sibling spouse and I can add it with data frame parent children and plus one the passenger itself. So this will create a new feature family size by combining the sibling spouse parent children along with the passenger similarly we can also create a new feature is alone whether the passenger have any sibling spouse parent children or not so we say data frame is alone first of all i will set it to zero zero means the person is alone and then we can put one for those passengers who have sibling spouse or parent children as well so how to do that <coughs> So I can say data frame dot lock command. Lock command is used to locate the values inside the data frame. So I will say data frame and then family size. So I will find out all the rows where the family size equal to one. Then I can say, so this is a binary feature derived from family size. So if the family size is one, then is alone will be one, indicating that the passenger is alone. Otherwise, is alone will be equal to zero. It means the passenger have sibling spouse or parent children on the ship. These new features can provide additional information to the machine learning model, potentially improving its performance. So let's execute this cell and see our new data frame after adding family size and is alone. So I execute it and then I say data frame not had. So we can see a new column family size and is alone has been added in our data frame. Now let's move to feature scaling. 
Feature scaling is a method used to standardize the range of independent variables or features of the data. In data processing, it is also known as data normalization and it is generally performed during the data processing step. We will apply feature scaling to our age and fair columns. These two features are chosen because they are numerical features with different scales. Age ranges from about 0 to 80, while the fair can go from 0 to much higher values. So by scaling these features, we ensure that they contribute equally to the model performance. So let's see how to do that using Python. First of all, we need to import standard scaler from sklearn library. We will say from sklearn.preprocessing import standard scaler. And then we have to create an instance of the standard scaler. So I will say scaler is equal to standard scaler. And then we can apply this scaler to the whole data frame or to individual columns. Here I will just apply this standard scaler to the two columns age and fair. We can say data frame and inside we need to choose our columns. For example, let's say I want to scale my age column and I also want to scale my fair column. Equal to, I will say, scalar dot fit transform method. This method will convert our both features to a standard scalar format. And inside, again, we have to specify the name of the columns we want to standardize. So it's H and SIR. Usually we don't apply the standard scalar or normalization on our categorical features. And then after that, we can check our data frame after applying standard scalar. If I run it, so we can see the age column has been converted into a scaled version. And similarly, the fair has also been converted into a scaled version. They both bring down to the same scale between a specific range. Perfect. So we have used the standard scaler from sklearn.preprocessing module, which standardized the feature by removing the main and scaling to unit variance. So to standardize, we take a value of the each record and subtract the main value and divide by the variance. Now let's move to our last step of the data processing categorical to numerical feature conversion. To convert our categorical features to numerical, again we will use the processing module from sklearn. For example, if I check data frame dot d types, this will return me the data types of my variables. So I can say the name is object, the categorical variable, sex is also a categorical variable, embark is also a categorical variable. And usually machine learning models, they work with the numerical features. So we need to convert categorical features to numerical. Here, the name has nothing to do with our prediction model. So we can simply drop the name column, but we can convert our embarked and sex from categorical to numerical. Field. So let's see how to do that. So first of all, we need to import our label encoder from sklearn library. And then we need to create an instance of the label encoder. And then we can apply this label encoder to our the sex column. So we say data frame, we say encoder, encode dot sheet transform. It's a method which will convert our categorical feature to numerical. And inside we can provide the name of the column we want to convert. And then I can see my data frame head. So we can see in our sex column, the male has been converted with one and female has been converted with zero. And always remember categorical feature, they can be ordinal or they can be nominal. So if the categorical feature is nominal, mean it's just a name or things like here we have the sex male and female, there is no order. So we use the label encoder. But in case if there is an order between the data, in that case, we cannot use the label encoder. We have to use the dummy variables. So we can also convert embark categorical feature into numerical and name has nothing to do with the prediction so we can simply drop it and ticket number also has nothing to do so we can drop it so we can simply copy paste this command i will say embark encode that fit transform embark and then if i execute so you can see embark has been converted into numerical feature and name and ticket number has nothing to do with our data frame so we can simply drop it so we can say data frame dot drop so i want to drop name and i also want to drop ticket shows the ticket number and we can say in place is equal to true that is change the original data frame and then we can say data frame dot head so this concludes our data processing we have loaded the data handle missing values clean the data 
do feature engineering, scale the features and convert it categorical features to numerical features. This data set is now ready for use in machine learning models. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any question, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more tech tips and tricks. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Until then, happy coding.